Hello viewers, Wayne here. A little bit of a change today. Today is a regularly scheduled maintenance session. Just kidding. I just felt the knives needed some sharpening and the cleaning of my copper pan has been long overdue. I'm using a 1000-6000 combo stone and a 12000 polishing stone. I'll be sharpening my sort of everything other than boning knife and my veggie knife. The thick boy boning knife featured heavily in previous episodes will not be sharpened today as it's still in very good shape. So I've been talking with friends and family about the previous videos, go check them out, and one of the common response I got was that the instructions were very detailed. Now, while I'm incredibly grateful and happy that my videos were somewhat helpful, that wasn't actually what I wanted to get across, or the kind of video I wanted to make. I mean, my intention was to tell a little story or just chit chat while cooking whatever I was cooking. But I guess I've been focusing so much on the dish itself and my experience going through the cooking process that the videos ended up like how to make a beef wellington. Do you know what I mean? Like, in my mind, me making a tutorial type video doesn't make much sense because I'm not a professional. I consider myself more of a slightly more capable than your average amateur home cook. And there are countless how-to videos out there already. Some of them even feature the world's best chefs. All in all, tutorials are not what I had in mind, even though they turned out that way. Now that I've thought about this, it suddenly occurred to me that this kind of mentality was exactly what kept me from making videos in the past. As you could probably tell, I'm not the extrovert extrovert person in the world. As a matter of fact, I, I'm a terrible introvert. Um, and small talk is my arch nemesis, really. You know, Jeremy Clarkson once said in an interview or something that small talks are easy. You just need to be interested in the person you're talking to. And here's the thing. I'm not always interested in the person I'm talking to. Wait, no, that came out wrong. Um, I mean, I hope nothing against people. I'm not a sociopath, but still... At least in a small talk scenario, it's not an enjoyable thing to me most of the time. And another thing on being interested in people, I often worry about the line between interested and creepy. Like, I always worry about, oh, did I say something inappropriate? Or is it okay to ask this or that? You know, that kind of stuff. Anyway, enough about my personal feelings. I guess one advantage of a new channel is that I could try out different contents and styles without the need to worry about the audience too much. Or at all, more like. Okay, the sharpening is done. Ideally, I should stroke the knives over some leather to give them really fine edges, but I haven't got one of those you know, finishing leather boards thing at hand, so maybe next time. Let's move on to the dish of today's episode. Now, this is one of my favorite dishes with chicken. And by cooking it this way, it is pretty much guaranteed you'll get a super juicy and tender chicken breast every time. It also makes for a satisfying quick meal. Here we go. When preparing chicken dishes, I always try to buy whole chickens, if possible. You get so much more for the money than buying just the breast. I'll take the breasts and legs off. The rest of the chicken and the carcass will be used to make the stock and sauce. And it is a special sauce because it uses a special wine from France, Benjol. Literally means yellow wine 
this specialty from the Jura region is an extremely distinct style of wet wine made from Sauvignon grapes. Basically, it is a fermented white wine and this fermentation or aging process usually takes over six years and is taking place under a thin layer of yeast. In French, they call it chouval or under the veil in English. Man, the French are good at naming things. So with this long and slow process and the fancy fermentation methods, what do you get in the glass? Well, I personally don't quite know how to describe the flavor profile in words. But number one, you know you're having Vangeon the moment you sip it. And number two, if you have any idea of how Shaoxing cooking wine tasted like, the Vangeon tastes very similar to that. Perhaps with a little more acidity and more um, refined. This is what I feel to be the most accurate description of Vangeon's flavor. And for those of you that have absolutely no idea what I'm on about, some wine experts describe the style and flavor of Benjon to be similar to those of Fino Sherry, only it's not fortified. Voila. Having said all that, Benjon is without any whiff of doubt and a quiet taste. True story. When I told the girl at the wine dealer that I wanted to buy a bottle of Benjon, she double checked and then triple checked with me that I knew what I was trying to purchase. Because Obviously, she's been through multiple times where people had no idea of what to expect from this fancy looking bottle of nectar that isn't exactly what you could call cheap. Unlike most wines, Vangeon doesn't come in standard 75 centiliter bottles. It must be bottled in the special squat 62 centiliter bottles called Clavela. My bottle here costs just under $100 after tax, and this is about the average price for a bottle of Mandrel. I've gone way off topic. However, I do recommend you give this unique wine a go. Even if you hate it, you've still got a recipe to burn it with, don't you? Okay, back to our dish. It's a very simple dish. The chicken breast gets quickly browned without cooking the middle, and the carcass is used to make the sauce with morel mushrooms, mandrel, and the cream. The breast then gets poached gently in the sauce. And here's how it works. So, I said earlier that small talk is my arch nemesis, right? And something just popped into mind. You know, one thing that took me some getting used to when I first came to the States was actually going to the cafe. Or you might ask, why? Well, when I was living in the UK, whether it's London, the East, the North, or even Northern Ireland, from my experience, the ordering process usually begins with, I, uh, I'd like a flat white, please, or whatever drink of your fancy. Right. Here in the States, though, I walk in, I begin to order, and right after I said hi, nine times out of ten, the barista would reply with, Hi, how are you? with a big smile and the one time just with, hi, how are you? I wasn't ready for that. The first few times I almost bit my tongue because I had to stop my ordering process midway and reply to their kind regards. I mean, it's really nice of them to ask how am I doing regardless of their sincerity, but in my strange mind, that just felt superfluous. I probably sound like a total douchebag, but with all due respect, it is what it is. For our sauce vangeon, the star ingredient is obviously the vangeon. Um, while it works fantastically here with the morel and the chicken, you'd probably think without such a unique flavor, I just can't make this sauce. Stands to reason, right? But if you recall something I said earlier that Vangeon tastes eerily similar to Shaoxing cooking wine, the substitute is right here. Go to Shantown, get a bottle of Shaoxing, enjoy the food. Or 
for better results, get your hands on some good quality or premium Chinese yellow wine. Because Shaoxing is sort of a subcategory of Chinese yellow wine and is generally considered of a lower quality. In fact, that's exactly what I've done in the past. I was back home in China a couple of years ago. One evening, I was craving this dish. I didn't have Manzhong, but what I did have was a jar of Niu Hong. Niu Hong, or Dozer Red, literally, is a kind of more premium Chinese yellow wine. The name comes from ancient folk customs in the southern parts of China, where affluent families would bury a jar of quasi-made yellow wine for their newborn daughter. The jar of wine would then only be dug out and enjoyed at that daughter's wedding. Since births and weddings are both happy, auspicious events, and as Chinese associate such events and emotions with the color red, daughter red hence got its name. There you go. Now where was I? Oh yes, the sauce.、Um, whether you use French yellow wine or Chinese yellow wine, either will give the sauce great depth of flavor. And you'll enjoy the sauce regardless. After the sauce has been cooking for 20 minutes, I can finally strain it and add the cream to it. And after that, the chicken breasts get poached in the cream sauce, very very gently, around 60-ish degrees centigrade, for around 10 to 15 minutes, depending on the size. And at the same time, I can prepare the garnishes for this dish. And the garnishes are equally as simple. One of them is leeks cooked in an emulsion, and another just some fried、uh, maro mushrooms. And lastly, to use up all of the chicken, I pan fry the livers and the hearts. And now everything is ready. I can slice the chicken breasts and get plating. The chicken breasts cooked this way is incredibly juicy and tender. And people always ask, how do I make chicken breasts interesting and tasty and not bland, boring, and dry and chalky? Here's a way of doing it. I'm really bad at plating. I know. And especially for pastas, because usually when I have pasta at home, it'll just be dumped into a bowl or plate and dig in. I've never tried plate up bowl of pasta, so bear with me. While I would say this is one of the most juicy and tender chicken breasts you can have, for those of you who are either on a diet or are very health conscious, this is probably not the best. Way to have chicken, but still, this method of cooking chicken breasts—you know, brown it first and then finish poaching it in some liquid—is still a very useful and easy way of getting juicy and tender chicken breasts. So, by not poaching it in some heavy cream sauce, you can still get a very lean and clean and healthy chicken dish. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. All right, here is the final dish. Now I know this presentation isn't as refined or elegant as I'd liked, but hey, we at home taste is what matters the most, right? And I hope you like this kind of less how-to, more chatty style videos. And if you have any thoughts about this episode or about Vanjong and the dish, let me know in the comments down below.、And、also, like, subscribe, and all that. But the most helpful way is to share this video. It really helps the channel grow.、And、lastly, thanks so much for watching, and I hope you have an awesome week. Love you. Bye. <laughs> Come drone from the 表层，然后看。